Wow, that's great. Sounds superb in there. Listen, I just love to listen to music and seven out of ten people do just as much. There's no better place actually in their everyday course of the day than to listen in the car. That's what a very recent survey is telling us. So good enough a reason to talk about sound and acoustics. Because a lot has happened since the 80s. In the 80s, when we filled our trunks here with power amplifiers and loudspeakers. Today, manufacturers like Audi offer you perfectly integrated sound systems for top-notch quality demands. And in future, we will have what we call an immersive holistic sound experience. So the sound experience with the audio system is what we're talking about today. The technical foundations, the sound space of the car. And of course, we will also be talking about the future. And we do so with these two experts. That's Tobias Gundel, our head for the development of sound and acoustics. Hello to you. And it's Michael Wisniewski. He is sound engineer and developer. Hello to you. Now, first question to both of you. Why? Why do we, what, what have you got to offer today? Well, sound in itself, as you said at the start, is very emotional. Sound is actually pure emotional appeal. But it's not as it used to be in the past, just a component of the vehicle. It's not just one disjunct unit within the car. No, sound is and will become more than that. Sound will become an integral part of a more holistic experience. It's going to be a fundamental element of our holistic entertainment system in the car. So, Michael, what are customers expecting? Well, look, customers expect an audio sound on a top-notch level. And, well, I mean, a good audio, a good sound experience is also, well, it's, it's a quality requirement that we want to meet. Okay, that brings us bang on into the middle of this Tech Talk on Sound and Acoustics. And so, on behalf of Audio Communication, welcome. Welcome here with us. Uh, we are happy to have you on board to talk with us online in the Q&A session. We will start, however, in this first half in this studio. We'll be up to the current level. And in the second part, then, of the Tech Talk, we look forward to your questions and the discussion with you, which you can do live by calling directly into the show or send us your questions well, using the chat function and button. But let's get started. Sound acoustics. They are, shall we say, quite general terms. I mean, what do you, what do you realize and hear in the way of noise and where does it come from in the car? Well, look, in the car, you have a wide range of potential noise sources. You have, for example, everything that comes from driving. For example, the rolling noise of the tire. Then you've got the engine. Then you've got the ancillary power sources. For example, the exhaust. It's the entire exhaust system. It's the various other elements, like also wind noise from the outside. Of course, if you go faster, they increase. They are audible. Another example would be the electronic exterior mirror that can reduce wind noise. So that's the things that we deal with when you look at the car. You have, shall we say, a noise stage that's very typical for a, class, for a car, depending on the class and the options. Of course, sometimes the engine is louder and sometimes less loud. But then you look at electric cars, they're different altogether. And of course, you have all the warning sounds and signals. I mean, you've got the park distance control, for example. That's one of the peeping signals. Then we've got the exit warnings. We've got collision protection displays and acoustic signals. We've got the fuel gauge that will inform you. And this holistic sound concept in the cabin and to make that unmistakably an Audi sound experience is what we do. And of course, yeah, the developers sometimes have to suppress a noise, sometimes have to amplify and stress a certain sound. And we looked what one colleague does in the following clip. Johannes Kirstner, an acoustics engineer at Audi, works each day on analyzing the sound of car components, both inside and outside the vehicle. We're responsible here for the acoustic measurement of parts such as spoilers, window winders, windscreen wipers, and electric seat adjusters. We measure all those parts and then evaluate them acoustically. A so-called dummy head is used for sound recording. Equipped with microphones, it simulates human hearing. To ensure that measurements can be compared, the head always has to be in the same position. 
Hier sieht man jetzt Here you can see the recording of the window winder. Here as a raw signal, here opening and here closing. Terms such as amplitude or frequency are used here to define the perception of a sound. Their meaning can be illustrated by an orchestra. It consists of a large variety of instruments with different pitches, so-called frequencies. The amplitude defines their volume. To create exceptional overall acoustics, the individual instruments have to harmonize with each other where sound and intensity are concerned. And with Audi, it's just the same. If background noise of indeterminate origin occurs, an acoustic camera is used. Microphones are installed outside it, on the arms. From the differences in the sound duration, the camera can calculate the location of the sound in the image. The evaluation of short, more complex sound events, such as the closing of a car door, requires a keen ear and all the expertise of an acoustics engineer. In that case, we heard a rattle near the left door. Now we'll check if the right door is better. Yeah, special constructions such as insulation inserts can also influence the sonic properties of a component. Well, and whether you have this kind of sonorous sound, whether you think this is agreeable or not so agreeable, that's of course, of course something very subjective. But how do you actually, well, sense these kind of noises? When is it generally deemed to be agreeable and when less? Well, look, an agreeable sound is something that is what you daily would hear and which you're confronted with on a daily basis, something that is natural. And disagreeable is something that is foreign and strange. I mean, take nature, something that you live with day in and day out, that you know. That is something that's agreeable. And if you break this down, something that is, as I say, quite natural and it should sound naturally, it shouldn't sound strange. And so that's our benchmark. We create an image of a perfect natural sound in the interior, and only then is it what we would deem to be premium. Now, in this development to premium sound inside the car, we've had already passed a number of miles. So let's just have a look at some of them here in um, a few selected cases. For example, the Audi 200 in 1989, you had for the first time Bose as a brand joining us. Indeed, a great brand. First subwoofer, as you see here in 1989, that was really pure emotional appeal inside the car. Then in 2001, in the Audi A4, here we had for the first time the first center loudspeaker. Sounds banal, Michael, but it's everything but banal. Indeed. I mean, for, for, for somebody who, like you, relishes the sound, you want to have this stage in the car. You want to have the music coming from the front. And here, a central speaker is so vitally important. Then in 2006, we brought in the Audi A8, the first Audi Advanced from B&O, Bang & Olufsen. To this day, a very important strategic partner, top brand, top performance. That's really premium brand acoustics in the car. And the 3D sound system, introduced at the time in the Q7. Indeed. With the Fraunhofer Institute, we developed an algorithm for that 3D sound and to make the sound experience inside the cabin really um, reach another level. Okay, this was just an overview, but let's have a look at the present. What are the concerts that you offer today? Okay, as Audi, we can offer, shall we say, three different concepts in the smaller cars, three specific. Then we've got the four channel system with up to eight speakers. That's a standard feature in most of our cars. And then furthermore, we've got the standard Audi sound, or as you see here in the SQ5 next to you, that's the premium sound with 3D sound fitted into it. And that means 19 loudspeakers, a booster with up to 16 channels and 755 watt performance. And that's what in this vehicle category is really the, well, utmost you can have. Okay, if you take this one level further and you have your tablet to show us maybe what can be offered in the Q8 and the luxury class models. Indeed, if we go, for example, like in the Q8, we can offer what we call the advanced sound. And that means up to 23 loudspeakers and up to 
1,029 watt performance. And of course, another feature here that we have for the rear seat passengers makes the sound such a 3D experienceable sound. And you can see the loudspeakers here in the middle of the tablet, which here, together with the surround loudspeakers, which I'm showing you here now in the middle, the center of my tablet, makes that 3D sound, well, experienceable for passengers in the rear. For the sound to be really up to it, you will need, as I already mentioned, the center speaker for that stage experience. And that is, of course, combined with the extractable high frequency loudspeaker that you see here. And further to that, what you see here in the middle, that's the 3D loudspeaker for the front end passengers. Then in the doors, you've got these closed loudspeakers, increase loudspeakers to make sure that, for example, um, when you use your phone over loudspeakers, you can't hear that from the outside. Same holds true from the for the rear. And furthermore, at the rear end is the booster with up to 23 channels. So up to 23 loudspeakers can be activated. And then, of course, also the subwoofer at the far end. Now, you mentioned the 3D sound system. What, what, what does that mean? Well, 3D is nicely split up, as you see here on the slide, into what we call the 1D sound. This is the staging from which the sound is coming, and that really gives it that emotional appeal of the music. It's on the stage, in front of you. That's what we call the 1D sound. That is then enriched by the surround loudspeakers coming on board. And that's this surround sound that really envelops you. And then, further that, we have the already mentioned algorithm from Fraunhofer, from the Fraunhofer Institute, which we take from the 5.1 content, the stereo content. And with that, we take the high frequency information, calculate that out, and then project it onto the front 3D loudspeakers or the rear for those sitting on the second bench. So what we want to achieve with this is, of course, we want to make the cabin acoustically sound bigger than it actually is. But of course, that brings us the, to the question, how about the, the smaller vehicles? How do you do that there? Well, in a smaller vehicle category that you see here behind me, of course, we have the positions where we can fit them being a bit more limited. And here, 3D loudspeakers are hard to be integrated in a post. And so we use a different technology here, the mid-frequency um, I integrate it into the dashboard and are feeding the sound directly into windscreen. And here we're using the reflection principle. So the input angle is the output angle. So that here you can also have this 3D experience as a customer in this size of cars. Wow. If it's all about sound in the car and the sound system, there's, of course, plenty of myths also from the past. And I'd, I'd like to ask you four questions. And you can actually, you can note for yourself whether you get them right or not. So the first myth says... The power of the amplifier, the more, the better. Mm -hmm. What would you say? True? Yes or no? To bias? Of course, it's good to have power, but it's by no means the sole or main criteria that we should look at. So, myth number two, the size of the loudspeaker, the bigger, the better. True or false? What would you say? What? Hmm? What do you think, Michael? No, that's completely wrong. The right frequency needs the right loudspeaker dimension. Brings us to the third question, hardware versus software. When with hardware, I always think of these huge, massive loudspeakers. Is hardware more important than software? Yes or no? What would you say, Michael? Here again, sadly, I miss the combination of good software with good components. That's brings and generates that good sound. It's not just the size of the hardware. Last question, subwoofer, the bigger, the better. True or false? What would you say? You will tell us. Subwoofer, yes, yes, it still needs to be sizable and big. Yes, the subwoofer needs to be a big hardware. So, okay, that should clarify these four myths. And you can ask yourself, are you a sound expert? Did you get them all right? If you've got two or less right you have to repeat the show once more. But let's continue with the program. Tobias, tell us, what's the quality standard with Audi? What is our typical Audi sound? Well, 
it's what I would call a natural sound. It's innovative. It's an innovative sound, and it's an emotional sound. So these are the catchphrases that we work by. A natural sound, the perfect synergy between all the frequencies that we can generate through the loudspeakers into the cabin. So it's not just to map frequencies, but to offer you that perfect um, harmony between the floor and the roof air and everything in between. You should feel embedded in the sound, embedded not just by the frequency range, but as I said, also emotionally, it should be appealing to you. You want to be able to listen to the sound, you want to be able to feel the sound, you want to experience it, you want to be entertained. So for us, especially the lower frequencies, the bass frequency should be as if you you are on stage or are in front of the stage and you really are getting seriously that punch, the punch you would get from a bass drum or from a snare. And as I said, innovation. Innovative work means that the, the psychoacoustic is so important. It's not just only a matter of hardware. It's not just power and performance. No, it's, it's uh, not just decibel, dB. No, this is now enriched by the, what we call psychoacoustic elements, the smart solutions, smart solutions for customers. Wow, I can hear. You need the right expertise. You need the right engineering. But of course, you also need years of experience and of course, also the right working environment. So we had a look at what Michael does at his work. My name is Michael Wisniewski. I work on audio and sound development at Audi's sound department and focus mainly on DSP and algorithmics. I've been at Audi for 12 years. We perform sound tuning. We investigate how components and algorithmics function in the car, and we check and verify a function in the in-car environment in order to ultimately sell it to the customer. You can compare sound tuning to a guitar. Fitting the loudspeakers is actually comparable to the body of the guitar. The rough tuning is comparable to thinking which strings shall I use to define the sound I want to make. Up to the point where the artist is standing on the stage tuning their instrument, we're talking about fine-tuning. We use the reference room to really assess what the music's about, what the artist wants to convey with their music, so that later we can determine whether the car is tuned in a way that enables the customer to truly hear what the musician wanted to express. The reference room is set up in such a way that it creates as little reflection as possible from the walls, ceiling and floor, so as to reproduce the piece of music as faithfully as possible. In the acoustically dead room, we can check in a defined way whether the frequency response of a loudspeaker is just as we specified it should be. Compared with an ordinary room, the advantage of an acoustically dead room is that we don't have any backward reflections, and that when measuring loudspeakers, genuinely only the direct sound of the component to be tested is measured. As well as measuring frequencies in the acoustically dead room, we use a laser measuring system that helps us determine the loudspeaker's other parameters. At the desk, we check everything for obvious errors. I can repeat a lot of the measurements at the desk to check for formal accuracy, and also whether what we verified in sound tuning has later on been applied to the component. In the climate chamber, we test various components such as loudspeakers, as well as amplifiers at high or extremely low temperatures. The effect of the extreme temperatures on the components, for instance, includes the bead of a loudspeaker becoming hard when cold. That alters its sound characteristic as well as its phase. Or if high temperatures might cause an amplifier simply to shut down. We need to take steps to prevent that. We use the microphone arrays more for technical measurement, because the arrays of eight microphones offer us a bigger spatial range. For instance, we use them to measure an in-vehicle delay at the various loudspeakers. The dummy head has the advantage that it includes the ears. I can record what someone will hear in practice and listen to that on my headphones. We also use it wherever we want to check speech intelligibility or look at the documentation, the procedure, because we then get reproducible results. 
We use the sound lab to measure everything for which we need a car, for realistic in-car conditions, with the loudspeakers in the right position, so that in the car I can really hear what the artist wanted to express with his music. Great job you've got there, Michael, I must say. Lovely. Now, one question I've always been asking myself, is the car, is that actually a good place to listen to music? For you, yes, of course. And that we get it right for you, well, you have to go through quite some R&D and have to consider a few facts and figures. For example, we've got different seating positions. You're never really sitting in the right sweet spot. Then, what's more, I mean, Sometimes somebody's sitting in the car or not, so that, that's that's a reflecting factor. And the volume changes with people inside or not inside the car. Then you've got the noise from the outside, from the drive itself, that needs to be considered. Then we've got different reflection behavior from, from alcohol tar lining, from all the materials in the car. So all that needs to be considered. And if you take all of this on board, a good sound in the cabin is audible for you. So it's quite a few challenges you have to meet, and I can imagine, especially with sporty cars, with sporty engines and vehicle concepts, it must be very hard. But with the electric cars, like the e-tron, it's, it's, it's easier, no? Well, electromobility is an opportunity and a challenge at the same time. It's an opportunity, yes, because you can now make things audible or become make, make, make ranges audible that so far were impossible. So the sound really reaches a new dimension, a new value, and a new quality inside the cabin. So this is a huge opportunity that we see with electromobility. Challenge, of course, at the same time is also a given because if need be, we need to, of course, need to consider many, many aspects that are pretty unbeknown to us and that so far have not been well considered and need to be considered more and more in future. So this requires a certain knowledge and expertise, but we're happy to take up that challenge and are really looking forward to, well, herald in the next era. So you've got plenty to do to, to really insulate the car in all the right spots. We've actually got this slide here. You can see it's, it's numerous areas where you need to insulate the car acoustically. Indeed, and that's the opportunity that we see. As you see here, all these areas and all these elements where you need to insulate, it's an enormous effort to have this, this decoupling from the road to the cabin actually um, guaranteed. But as I said, as I said before, it's also an enormous benefit for the acoustic development inside the cabin. I, we, we think this really offers us great opportunities. So you're constantly having passive measures to take to, to compensate noise, but of course you also got active measures that you're taking, is that right? Indeed, indeed. There's a number of active measures, as we call them, active measures to reduce exterior noise, but also to have specific sounds here, for example, made audible quite deliberately. Take the SQ5. In the exhaust system, you've got a loudspeaker integrated into that exhaust system so that the customer gets the emotional appeal from the engine and can hear it whenever he wants to. Another element, and I brought this with me here, that would be, as you see here, this kind of actuator. Now, we use this kind of actuator in the window so that when you lower or lift window that can be used like a membrane the side window and simply to well, give you that more emotional engine sound then we've got the what we call the ANC the act of noise cancelling and here we are really looking quite quite deliberately at the various frequencies that are emitted and generated for example by the engine or by any other element like the exhaust system and that can be transferred into the cabin. So here, that's another element where you can, for example, make the noise perceptible in the cabin quieter or in the current e GT, we, for example, have the engine noise actually generated through the loudspeaker system into the inside of the cabin. Now, before you go too far, what else have you got with you? What other exhibits have you got here? Well, we just talked about myths, and here, I just wanted to show you, that's a subwoofer. That is a subwoofer for frequencies below 30 hertz. Now, 
As I already said, the miss is, of course, the bigger the better. Here, look, this is a high-frequency loudspeaker that's been optimized for frequencies as of 5,000, 6,000 hertz, all the way up to 20,000 hertz. So that can't produce bass, and this one can't produce the high frequencies, the highs. Then here, another little element. It's a microphone that we use for the active noise cancelling. And that's fitted to the roof of the car to just check are we achieving the right a and c figure the active noise cancellation figure that we want or oh, here that's what we call it's a booster a 23 channel advanced booster which has 1020 watts for the 23 loudspeakers that you may have fitted to the car well thanks michael now let's assume the worst case happens and you hear some kind of creaking or some disruptive noise from the cockpit what do you do well, we've got a so-called rattle and squeak team at Audi. So that's a, that's a cross-departmental team of, of various experts from areas, yes, from quality management, uh, quality assurance, total vehicle, acoustics, and the likes. And they come together and help us in the R&D of the car's acoustics. For example, if you go over a cobblestone like this, cobblestone stretch like this, or you put the car on a sort of hydraulic pulser with four different hydraulic pulse frequencies. You just want to make sure there's no disruptive, annoying noises developed that are unintentionally developed. An example would be, we call that the, 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 the bells of the city of Rome. So on the dashboard, you really could hear like a bell sound from a church bell. And then the rattle and squeak team really spend hours trying to find a source. And then we notice Ah, it was a faulty welding seam in the APOS. And that's where the rattle and squeak team really have to work across the various units and departments to make sure the car is as it should be and that it can offer this creature comfort feeling to the client, to the driver. And that the sound is really of quality that we want to offer. Okay. Wow. Thanks, Michael. Let's go back to the sound development, Tobias. You are head of this department. I mean, how do, how do you work? What are the process steps that you take care of? Well, in the past, sound development was all about that you give the car a sound system where you can listen to music, news, and the likes. But today, that's totally different. We are already involved early on. We work together with the design department, with the guys from the package. And we've got all these interfaces with all the various specialist departments. So it's really important that at an early stage, we can define the perfect position for the loudspeakers and that they are really then also fit it there so we need to be involved early on just to make sure that it's not just a matter of bringing noise and acoustics into the car but this well sound experience this sound impression this natural sound impression and also well depending on for example the angle of the windscreen and other elements other vital aspect is of course is our sound strategy so this is not just engineering that we try to bring into the car, new engineering skills. No. You want to know what are the requirements of a customer, of a customer group? What is he looking for? Uh, what can we achieve with what kind of technology, what, what kind of innovation? And this combined with a healthy carryover strategy, well, to, to also well make it for the benefit of the whole group and to have make the most of what the wider group can offer us. This is this holistic sound strategy that is, of course, befitting all of us. So if you're looking for the perfect sound, I mean, can you, can you also use virtual simulation iterations or do you always have to rely on your ears? Well, I'm a great, uh, I'm a great fan of, of, of simulation because it's a very smart method to get very quickly at, at potential performance enhancements. But at the same time, I always say, an objective measurement, I mean, it can never be objective, you so on, that can never be fully identical um, for one and the same car in the cabin. So here we all perceive that sound to be very subjectively. And that's, of course, the, 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 we're here between a rock and a hard place. We need good ears for the subjective perception. People with a skilled ear set that can check is that sound really validly projected? Another aspect for us is we've got, well, we talked a lot about the components that Michael mentioned earlier. So for us, the software component is vitally important now. I mean, 
we talked about the DNA, the, the, the genes of the Audi sound. And to create that, you need to understand where we're coming from. You need to be able to adjust that DNA and to adapt that. And that's why we at Audi have our own Audi framework. It's the so-called sound cube, which allows us, which allows us to really develop the best algorithms and to take them also from the market and to implement them in the cars. And this way, well, to 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 extend and enrich our sound portfolio and offer you additional premium content. Wow. I think this makes it quite clear what kind of development work you are doing. If you have any questions, dear viewers, don't hesitate to send us your questions already right now in and with the chat function. And of course, it's no secret we've got these good, strong partners. We mentioned Bose, we've mentioned Bangor Olufsen, and, and recently introduced to Q4 Etron, and suddenly you hear Sonos joining the fray. Another, another well-known and well, renowned brand from the hi-fi world. Why have you decided to cooperate with Sonos? Well, look, Bang & Olufsen is already a brand partner for the luxury segment. And, I mean, anywhere up from day 4, A6, A8. So, for us, we wanted to make sure that for the smaller vehicle categories, for the A1, Q1, 3 and the likes, we also have a brand on offer that, well, is very appealing for, shall we say, the fanciness for the youth and youngful um, listener. So this is a very fresh brand and a great brand with a superb legacy and heritage. And Sonus brand has its own sound character. And, well, we, we, we see the Sonus brand as an excellent um, enrichment and, and really, in a way, rounds out our product offer here. Soon to be available, as we heard. But let's take a look into the near and further future. What are the next steps for you? Well, we mentioned earlier, 3D sound will be a key component. And it's one that really is a very positive conveyance of sound. But the 3D sound, as we know it currently in the current fleet, is, of course, driven by an algorithm, an algorithm that Mike just mentioned there, and an algorithm that, I mean, conveys that natural feel, but that is best done not simply by using stereo content and ramping it up with an algorithm. No, we have what we call immersive audio elements. And immersive means you use content. Here you see it, that through the stream providers is made available and with the 5G network shall be available in the car. Here at the Las Vegas show in 2019, we already introduced that immersive element. And what you see here, for example, we're not just talking about sound. No, we're talking not just a single component of sound, but you can see here, this is a lot more as a holistic entertainment experience because we want to make sure entertainment shall be lifted onto the next level with the new technologies that we've not yet communicated, but that shall be available. But well, with a host of other technologies that you saw there, and as we already in the first impressions at the Las Vegas show in 2019. Seems as if we are partnering up with Hollywood. Well, indeed, we are. No, sure. But, I mean, if you think about autonomous driving, that means you will have time. You will have the means to divert your concentration a little from the road and to relish a movie. And then you want to have this immersive experience, something that really grips you all around. Let's be honest. Um, if, if you just drive down the road and you don't have to concentrate on the road, uh, well, then it could be a distracting. But if we're looking ahead to autonomous driving, where you have the time, where you have the peace and quiet, you could actually really enjoy such an experience. Wow, sounds like a new mobility experience. When will you be ready? When will you have that immersive car concept on offer? Our plan is by 2024, 2025, we will have an immersive audio experience that will be new and enriching and we will be looking forward to offer that to our customers by then wow thank you thank you very much to the experts we will soon be back again with a new tech talk and a new topic enjoy the rest of the day so thanks a lot and see you soon <laughs>